What is the piece of gear that everybody seems to overlook? A lot of amateurs don't even think about this. They don't think it's important. They want the filmic look, but they don't know how to get it. Today we got the Polar Pro Helix Mag Lock, and we got a base plate for it. Let's unbox this thing. So the reason I had to get this system for my Sony FX3, I went with the Polar Pro Burial ND Filter 2 to 5 stop mist filter. It has a mist filter on top of it which makes your footage look a little bloomy at uh, times. So the reason why I got the mist filter is because it gives it that awesome look. And then I also had to get this uh, base plate here. Polar Pro has their own unique um, mag lock safe uh, system which basically when you're walking around with an ND filter out in the wild, you are gonna fumble with these things and you might like actually scratch them. It behooves you to get some kind of protection on them. And truthfully, this is the only system that I've seen that has this lock function. So you put this on uh, the cover, it's like a lens cover, it's actually the filter cover, and it magnetically sticks to the filter, right? And then to take it a step further, it's got these buttons on the side. You just press in and they lock. So this, this isn't going anywhere. There's going to be a lot of situations where I'm moving or I just want to like put the camera up and I don't want to take the filter off and things like that. Cause I'm, I'm more of a run and gun shooter. I would use available light. I usually don't do lighting setups unless we're stationary like this YouTube video. The reason why the ND filter is so important is you need to keep the camera settings locked. And a lot of these guys don't have their camera settings locked. They want to get that film look, but they don't know how they're going to achieve it. And you get the film look by keeping certain settings in place and knowing how the light works. Um, you got to shoot at 1 over 50 or 1 over 48 truly to get like a true um, film look. And then you want to make sure your aperture is set to what kind of bokeh you want in the background, how blurry you want it in the background. And then you got to keep your film sensitivity at a certain um, ISO for the camera to operate and it's uh, most pristine condition. So you're pretty much not left with a lot of room. Either you gotta change the lighting or you've gotta use some kind of filter on the front. Especially if you're outside, there's just so much light with the sun that you need to cut down on light. So it's only smart to have a filter system on you. So let me show you what they got over here. This is their, the Polar Pro iPhone 15 Pro Max case, cage, whatever you wanna call it. So it's got this Defender plate on the front um, and then so what you can do with this is they got a few setups, right? Um, they sell this variable ND filter. It's just, it's specifically made for this case, right? So when you open it up, you can pop out the variable ND filter and it's got this uh, custom built little um, attachment, right? And you can just slide this thing on to your iPhone like that. And you can peel off the protective cover and you got your ND filter right there. But that's why this case is like super slick to me and like I actually like really like this case. It's probably my favorite one because of the easy use and you don't have to build out a whole thing. It's just got this little button that you can press to take it off. Um, and this is a variable ND filter. It's just plain Jane variable ND filter. It doesn't have a, uh, you know, some kind of mist uh, effect to it. Now they also sent me this, uh, this is a 67 millimeter um, thread for this. So you can see this thing has a, uh, you know, the square shape for the, the iPhone. And then you can take this filter they sent me. This is actually the Polar Pro Mist 2 filter. And it's a variable ND filter. Um, this one's a little bit more heavy duty. So you can unscrew it here. And you can just screw this onto this plate. And once this thing's on tight, you can just come here and slide this bad boy on. Bam, right there and then peel it off and you got yourself a heavy duty mist 2 filter five stops of dynamic range two to five and it's it's a lot bigger than the other one so as you can see you know this uh mist 2 filter is way bigger than this just variable nd filter that's you know this thing's only going to work on you know this case now that i've shown you guys what these filters look like let's go into the wild i want to show you 
you know, the difference between all of them and what the footage looks like between an iPhone, the FX3, and then not using a filter at all. Polar Pro is actually on the FX3 right now. I have a Polar Pro for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's a Mist 2 filter. And we also have the variable ND filter, which is no mist. So it has none of that bloom. Okay, you'll see the difference in that. And then I'll show you what the footage looks like if you're gonna run and gun and not put an ND filter on your footage, how good or crappy it looks. Looks crappy. Let's go out here and let's just go film some stuff. I don't even know what we're gonna go film. Let's go film. Damn, this is hard. <laughs> God, this is hard. Holding the heavy camera, this camera weighs a lot, dude. But like I said, people, they, they don't have looks. You know, they're just very vanilla. And part of my success is having a look behind, you know, what I shot back in the day and to this day still. So there's a lot of ways to do different looks for your films. You know, you can choose the camera that you decide to shoot on. It can be the lens that you chose, which creates the depth of field, um, the focal length. Is it wide? Is it close? Uh, you can choose how you want to light the scenario how you mess with lighting, how you, how dark you keep your images. It could be how you color correct it, how you color grade it, which color grading is adding color on top of a correctly exposed, correctly white balanced image. And you know, that's, that's what keeps things memorable. That's what makes films memorable. It's what's given me a voice, you know, it's the way an artist speaks on the mic and for me and a filmmaker, anybody that's making content, you know, that's that's what you want to craft. You want to craft that look. Beginning content creator, you got to think like, what is my style? What is my look? And I feel like a lot of people aren't thinking about that kind of thing. They're just worried about being viral, which is fine because virality breeds profitability. Okay, so this is the Sony FX3, no filter on it. This is their Peter McKinnon variable ND filter mag lock, magnetic lock is basically what that means. It's a mist filter, so it adds a little bit of a nice bloom to your image. But I already have it attached to the uh, thread, and you just thread it up here. Bam, there it is. Okay, so this is a 1 over 48 f3.5, and the scopes look pretty good. And then I have my uh, Polar Pro mist filter, uh, ND filter. This is on the FX3, and ISO is actually at 500 on this one. Okay, so I have the Polar Pro case on this thing. This is a 67 millimeter filter. You just slide it on here. This is the Mist 2 filter, like I was saying. So you just unscrew it here. You can just screw it on here, and then you peel it off, and voila. And let's not forget that I'm using the Blackmagic camera app. Okay, it's free. You wanna make your footage look better? Download the Blackmagic camera app. It's simple. You can start learning how to be a filmmaker today on your iPhone. You don't gotta have an iPhone 15, which is what I suggest everybody go get if you're just trying to get into this. But go, but you can download it for an iPhone, I think 12. I just saw a guy today recording to an SSD drive with an iPhone 12. You are your worst excuse maker. You're making excuses for yourself. Okay, so I'm now on the iPhone. Similar, similar shot, I'm shooting at, sorry, I'm shooting at 5,900 Kelvin. Okay, ISO is at 55 and same settings, 24 frames a second. I'm on a 24 millimeter. And you see the sky's not blown out. See so, you now if I open up this ND filter, it starts to blow stuff out. But I'm able to keep a 1.8 and I mean the depth of field's different, but it looks pretty comparable. It looks pretty good. Um, I like the Mist 2 filter and how it makes things look. And my lovely model, Anna, she's beautiful. This is a variable ND filter. It's a lot simpler of a process because it's just the piece. You just Pop it on there, and then you take it off. There's no screwing or anything. It's just a pop-on thing. But this also is a three to five. So this is a three to five stop ND filter. So let's see what this thing looks like. And this is not a mist filter, so there's no bloom on it. It's just strictly cuts down on light. Now this is the variable ND filter. It's five stops, and everything looks the same. Besides, there's no bloom on it. So let me know if you guys see anything different. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of all the filters. Which one do you like best? Personally, I like the Sony FX3. Hey, and that is the difference between the ND filters. So 
Hope that helped out. So let's go back to the lab. Like, comment, subscribe, share, share it, comment. The more comments you get, you know, I read your comments. If you guys need help, I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Facebook, I'm on all the platforms. And I actually do help you guys out. If you guys are looking to grow your social media, you want to learn how to get YouTube or TikTok or any of these platforms popping and get it monetized, I can show you how to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys around on the next one.